<laughs> my name is Hafiz Salmawi. I am a professor of energy engineering at the Gizeh University. I was formerly uh, executive chairman of the Egyptian Electricity Regulatory Agency. Uh, it's my pleasure to be your uh, moderator for this uh, webinar. Uh, actually, the webinar is organized by uh, the project support to the technical and financial sustainability of renewable energy and energy efficiency sector. Uh, the webinar entitled Financing and Funding Sustainable Energy, New Opportunities for the Private Sector. Uh, uh, since uh, maybe some of our attendees in this second webinar, basically this is a second webinar the project is hosting, uh, uh, let me first uh, try to introduce our project. Uh, uh, our project uh, support to the technical and financial sustainability of the renewable energy and energy efficiency sector is an EU funded project, which is being implemented in cooperation with the Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy and Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources. This project represents a part of the continuous support the EU is offering to the energy sector in Egypt, which has been confirmed in the second uh, Memorandum of Understanding on Strategic Partnership between Egypt and EU in the energy sector 2018-2022, uh, which was signed back in April 2018. The project is implemented by a consortium of consultants led by DAI Human Dynamics uh, with a partnership with Tractobel. Uh, the consultants have previously participated in many energy projects in Egypt, and they have a long experience with the energy sector in Egypt. The project consists of five components, which include uh, component A is about analysis and reorganization of the core functions of the new and renewable energy authority, NARIA, particularly with respect to planning, renewable energy investment, operations, and energy efficiency. Component B is about modernizing the renewable energy framework and assessment of resources and opportunities, as well as provision of support for grid planning. Component C is about uh, establishing of an energy modeling unit, which will be responsible for the continuous update of the energy strategy of Egypt. Uh, link it with social and economic development plan of the country and publish an annual report of Egypt energy outlook. It also includes update the sustainable and integrated energy strategy of Egypt 2035 and extended to 2040. Component D is about establishing Cairo Sustainable Energy Information Center, which will promote the information, uh, uh, promote the dissemination of information, communication, and awareness regarding renewable energy and energy efficiency. Finally, component E is about providing technical assistance to the energy efficiency and climate unit at the Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources. This includes assistance for enhancing the organizational structure of the unit, business plan for two years, and capacity building. Our today webinar is of a very interesting topic. The topic of this webinar was selected due to the recent issuance of the green bonds by the Egyptian government and the positive response of the international financial market to this. It is believed this new instrument to the Egyptian financial market can ease finance to green projects, which Egypt demand for financing green projects is tremendous. The expected needs for financing renewable energy projects till 2040 uh, for renewable energy, according to the ongoing update of the energy strategy of Egypt, is 53 billion US dollar, 53 uh, around 2.5 uh, billion US dollar every year. Sure, this is will come partially from the government, mainly from private sector. Yet this is a total 
investment needs. Uh, also, another $1 billion is needed for waste to energy projects. Uh, another $0.4 billion is needed for investment opportunities in mechanical biological treatment for RDF fuel. fuel. Regarding solar pumping, and according to RECRE Regional Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency study, which was done back three years ago, the market size is estimated at two gigawatt of solar pumping. This will represent an investment need of around two billion US dollars. Regarding switching to electric mobility, and according to the national strategy adopted by Egypt, it is expected that 2.2 million vehicle uh, will switch to electric mobility by 2040, representing 50% of the total added vehicles during this period. I mean vehicles, all type of cars, public cars, buses, uh, uh, as well as private cars. This will represent a minimum investment of another $50 billion. Sure, this is will be provided by consumers themselves, yet it will be needed to enable funds to consumer to acquire this vehicle. Also, the necessary infrastructure for charging uh, batteries for this car include 3,100 public charging uh, units as well as 400,000 private units. Regarding energy efficiency, and just an example for replacing 12 million refrigerators, which was produced before 2000. This will cost around 1.4 billion US dollars. This is just to offer incentives to consumers. This is not the cost of the refrigerator. This is the cost of incentives, which could be given to consumers to encourage them to change their old refrigerator and acquire new efficient ones. This will reduce the energy consumption of this refrigerator by one third, representing 11.5 terawatt hour savings, or around 6.2% uh, of the total electricity consumed in Egypt last year. On the other hand, uh, 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 a program for offering lead lamps to the first three blocks, which is basically challenging to have these lamps because of financial re uh, reasons, and this is the most uh, subsidized block, uh, uh, will cost 71 million US dollars in a form of a loans to this consumer. This will save around one terawatt hour per year. And this is just examples for energy efficiency, some energy efficiency national programs, not to mention energy efficiency in industries and other administrative and in building. Regarding water sector, the needs for water desalination, according to the national water strategy for 2050, will reach 10 billion cubic meter per day, around 3.5 uh, uh, billion meter cube per year. This will represent an investment of 10 billion US dollars. Also regarding wastewater treatment facilities, where the average coverage is currently is just 65, uh, 56%, 94% is for urban areas and 33.7% for rural areas. And according to the government plan, uh, 52 new wastewater treatment plants of a capacity 1.2 million meter cube per day will be uh, uh, built. This will represent an investment needs of 1.3 billion US dollar for these plans and the related networks. As it has been seen that, uh, which is just represent an example of green financed projects, substantial investments are needed for the 20 years, which need develop new financial instruments to enable finance to this project, such that Egypt can benefit from this investment opportunity. In this respect, it's my pleasure to welcome our distinguished panelists who kindly accepted to share our invitation and to share experience and vision regarding this important topic. 
uh, unfortunately, it was planned that uh, Dr. Ahmad Kojak, uh, Vice Minister uh, of Finance, uh, will be with us. Uh, but uh, for unscheduled meeting with the Prime Minister, uh, he uh, kindly delegated uh, both uh, Mr. Uh, Mohammed Hegazi, Chairman of the Public Debt Unit, and Mrs. Iman Abdul Azim, Chairman of the uh, Foreign Debt Unit, uh, to share his or to present his presentation and respond. To the question. But uh, let me first introduce uh, Mr. Ahmad Kojak uh, as he was appointed as a Vice Minister of Finance for Physical Policies and Institutional Reforms in March 2016. Since then, he has been playing a leading role in designing and implementing Egypt macroeconomic reforms. He has been uh, the leading negotiator and focal point regarding IMF three, three years standby agreement with Asia. Mr. Kojuk is a professional economist and policy advisor uh, with more than 15 years of applied experience. He worked as a senior economical, uh, economist uh, for the World Bank. Mr. Kojuk has uh, two master degrees uh, the first one from public policy from uh, in a public policy uh, from Harvard's Kennedy School uh, of Government uh, and another master degree in economics from York University in the United Kingdom in addition to his bachelor degree in economics uh, from the American University in Cairo. Uh, Mr. Hegazi and Mrs. Iman, uh, I appreciate if you could deliver uh, the presentation of Mr. Ahmad Kaj. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hafiz, for this uh, introduction. And thank you for inviting us for attending this webinar. Um, uh, let me, uh, in just two minutes, introduce the updates of our uh, debt uh, uh, performance. Uh, which is the key or the, the strong for the economy, uh, representing uh, many uh, good indicators in, 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 in performance for our debt uh, uh, as a whole debt. Uh, we succeeded during the last fiscal year until now to uh, convert our uh, yield for the uh, treasuries uh, to to be in a stable in a stable uh, yield curve instead of uh, uh, inverted yield curve during the last three years, and now we we, we reached uh, for uh, treasury bonds to be as a net issuance as a 71 percent of our total net issuance uh, from the uh, treasuries. Uh, we succeeded again to. Uh, upside our foreign outstanding for our uh, portfolio to reach now uh, above 21 billion dollars and instead of, instead of uh, 9 billion uh, we, after the uh, covid-19 effect after uh, by end of february uh, and for our average uh, time to uh, to maturity for our uh, portfolio we reached now three years or above three years, actually 3.2 years coming from 1.3 years. Uh, uh, for all of these uh, circumstances, we succeeded to uh, to get our first issuance in green bonds, which is not an easy way or not an easy thing to, to get this issuance during the, the, the last six or seven months, uh, the, what happened to, due to COVID-19. And I let uh, my colleague Iman to speak about uh, it uh, in details. But uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, the the message that we that we got from the uh, investors that our uh, economy is keeping strong and sustainable, uh, which uh, reflecting on our pricing on our covering for this uh, green bond issuance. And uh, 
we we keep uh, this succeed during inshallah uh, the next uh, years yet yes um, and now uh, I let the microphone to our green queen Miss uh, Ima. Good morning, Dr. Hafiz. It's my pleasure uh, to join uh, with you uh, and uh, dear participant uh, on this webinar uh, to speak about the first sovereign uh, green transaction uh, uh, for Egypt. It uh, Actually, it was a milestone transaction uh, for us. Um, and of course, if you may aware that the international recognition that we received uh, immediately after we released uh, the, uh, the press release uh, that we are ready with the, uh, the framework, green financing framework. And uh, just two days uh, after that, we succeeded to price the, the transaction itself. We received uh, a massive, uh, yeah, uh, a massive um, uh, demand on uh, on the transaction itself. Now uh, we are sharing the presentation uh, on the screen. Uh, so please let us know if you can see it with us. Yes, uh, it's okay. It's seen. It's shared. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So, Yanni, just we want to give you a, a quick highlight on uh, the current environmental background for Egypt related to uh, uh, some uh, pillars, explore, uh, exposure to climate change. Yani Egypt um, is one of the countries that uh, is uh, uh, exposed to the risk of climate change. Uh, in addition to our political commitment to uh, to take actions to correct uh, uh, as much as possible what we will uh, what we can uh, do to correct this uh, uh, or to uh, absorb these risks. Uh, uh, Egypt already known uh, the, our contribution to uh, a global uh, greenhouse uh, gas emissions uh, counted for 0.5 six percent uh, it's not uh, yani, a big percentage although that we are working hard uh, from a government level to put a lot of strategies a lot of ambitious plans to control this and to mitigate its effects uh, on our uh, uh, environment which will be reflected after all on uh, uh, the global environment as well and uh, yani, of course, it, it's your field and it's your topic that uh, uh, renewable energy. Uh, now Egypt is taking a lot of actions to uh, uh, go fast, achieving a lot of uh, actions and steps to, uh, to move towards the renewable energy, whereby uh, it's expected, inshallah, to reach uh, the component of renewable energy in electricity mix, ha having this percentage reaching to 42% by uh, 2035. And after all, uh, yani the government uh, itself is supporting the sustainable finance. Uh, we saw uh, back in uh, July 2018 uh, a very good initiatives raised by uh, financial regulatory authority. They, uh, they, uh, they announced that they are working on uh, promulgating an article to regulate the assurances of green bonds uh, for the private sector, of course, because the government is needing is needing all the uh, all the green assurances uh, for um, the government sector and government projects. And, fi and finally, we would like just to put a stress on the issuing of the green sovereign bond itself. As uh, I, as uh, I told you uh, in uh, in uh, in the beginning that we succeeded uh, in issuing the first green uh, bond uh, in the Middle East and North Africa. This privilege uh, will be, of course, uh, reflected uh, in, uh, in many aspects. One of these aspects, it will uh, help uh, the private sector to, to, uh, to put 
uh, a reference to the benchmark of the yield. It's now accessible uh, for all the private sector to issue green uh, bonds internationally, having the reference of our first green issues. And by the initiatives taken by uh, FRA, they can issue domestically as well. Uh, I believe very soon they will, uh, we will see a lot of issuances from private sector uh, uh, on both sides, domestic and external side. And of course, uh, uh, Egypt Sustainable Development Strategy, uh, we all know and we all are aware of Egypt Vision uh, 2030 goals. Um, mostly it depends on uh, the UN Sustainable Goals. Uh, and I will focus my talk about our framework, the Green Financing Framework. From the 17 goals announced by the UN, we have included uh, in our first uh, framework uh, that we will uh, going to cover six categories. The six categories uh, uh, belongs to five sustainable goals. We have a very ambitious government program uh, for uh, covering from year 1819 up to 2122. Uh, that we will see uh, a leap of uh, of, uh, of uh, progress uh, on uh, different uh, fields like water consumption, uh, rationalization, uh, cost protection, developing renewable energy resources, and of course, Bimban project, one of the biggest uh, solar projects uh, uh, planet uh, in the world that received the World Bank uh, Award in uh, late, late uh, 2018. It's, yani, it was also a landmark uh, project for Egypt. The transformation to green economy, a lot of uh, initiatives and uh, uh, ambitions plan have been taken uh, in this regard, led by uh, Minister of Environment and the National Council for Climate Change, which headed directly uh, by uh, uh, Dr. Mustafa Makbul, the Prime Minister as well as also the, the field for establishment of environmental compatible industrial clusters. And during our meeting, I'd like to tell you what, what, what was there behind uh, the stage. Where, um, in order to reach uh, the stage of uh, uh, finalizing the framework and uh, to be ready for the first issuance, we had several meetings with uh, our uh, uh, Counterparties parties and stakeholders in this transaction. Minister of Environment was the most important uh, party with us. And the knowledge that we uh, gained from themselves was very, very good because we are not in that field uh, as they are, but we know that they have a lot of, uh, of plans and they are operating with a lot of government uh, institutions uh, um, on sectorial level. I mean, they have a lot of plans with, uh, uh, with municipalities to uh, mitigate the effect of uh, uh, yani, uh, of all environmental uh, harm effects, uh, such as, for example, they have a very ambitious uh, program plan for uh, waste uh, management uh, 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 program, and that was announced by the Minister of Environment uh, herself. Uh, and just also to take uh, yani a quick talk regarding the Sustainable Development Plan for our physical year uh, 2020 and uh, 21. We are putting, as a government level, we are putting a lot of uh, 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 yani focus on uh, the green investment projects, such as sustainable transportation, generation of renewable energy, solid waste management, water uh, desalination plants, and sewage treatment plants. Um, the objective uh, is to increase the uh, proportion of green investment project proportion to reach 30% by 2022 and eventually to reach 100% by 24, 25 as a physical year. So what that say, that saying uh, uh, that the total, uh, yani the full uh, uh, period rising 
the green uh, the government investment will be uh, directed fully to uh, be injected to green uh, projects. And we received uh, yani a lot of questions from investors and from in, in international institutions themselves. Uh, one of these uh, yani questions, they are asking us, what is the expect of such bond on Egyptian economy and its growth? And definitely it will have a very positive uh, effect on, uh, on Egypt economy and its growth. Uh, why I'm saying that? Because uh, the net proceeds of the bond will be directed to projects related to renewable energy, clean transportation, like uh, the project uh, started already for its establishment, the monorail, uh, the metro line that will link uh, the new capital uh, city to uh, old uh, Cairo. Uh, also, we have uh, projects uh, related to pollution prevention and control. And energy efficiency, it was one of the ambitious uh, uh, yani fields that we are working on to uh, to have uh, its, uh, the coming uh, issuance, inshallah, to cover uh, uh, these uh, projects uh, from its net proceeds. And of course, climate change adaptation, it was uh, strongly recommended by Minister of Environment that we should work on such uh, uh, category. And finally, sustainable water and wastewater management. And this was um, yani, uh, the biggest portion of our uh, uh, first green proceeds, uh, the projects related to uh, um, sustainable water and wastewater management, uh, such as the, the water dissemination and sewage uh, uh, treatment. Whereby all of this, uh, yani project will definitely uh, uh, make a green effect on our economy. We have a portfolio uh, of green project equivalent, yani, uh, to, uh, yani equal almost to approximately 1.9 uh, billion in USD, whereby 16% goes to renewable energy projects and 19% goes to clean transportation and 26% goes to sustainable water and wastewater management and 39% goes to pollution prevention and control. So to, to, um, to focus more on uh, the sustainable energy under the green bond, on the sovereign uh, green bond uh, for Egypt, uh, I've included in, in this slide uh, some projects that have already included in our portfolio. And we have uh, uh, wind farm projects, we have also solar uh, planet projects, uh, like some extension done uh, in its, uh, the pipelines of Bimban project, and uh, electric uh, stations with wind power as well. Uh, this slide shows uh, the breakdown by eligible categories. Uh, I already mentioned that. And also the breakdown uh, by ministers, the contribution of projects we received from ministers. Um, and uh, as well, the breakdown of financing type. Why are we saying that? Because uh, some investors were, uh, yani were asking us, so the net proceeds that you will uh, use to finance the green project, it, is it all related to future investment or uh, already existing investment? So we have 72% uh, will, will finance new uh, projects and around 28% will uh, direct it to uh, financing existing projects. And finally, uh, uh, the last short on, uh, on the right, uh, uh, we just display the breakdown of eligible exp expenditures by years. And this slide shows the main uh, four components of the green bonds that we should be obliged uh, under the criteria of ICMA principles uh, of 2018. We are uh, fully uh, uh, yani, uh, obliged with these 
principles and uh, its criteria. And by the way, we received a robust opinion from an independent uh, second party opinion provider. Uh, we hired uh, uh, Beju Elise uh, firm. Uh, it's an affiliate uh, for Moody's uh, and uh, uh, they uh, I mean, tested or, or they, uh, they um, examined the framework and the portfolio of uh, our green projects and received uh, a robust opinion, which indicates the quality of the projects and the quality of uh, the, the framework uh, itself. Uh, and this is just details that you can see on the screen in front of you. As, uh, the meaning of each uh, uh, pilot, the use of proceeds that we have to use such proceeds to be directed to green project uh, in full uh, and for the process of project evaluation and selection that uh, to make sure that such proceeds will be uh, well controlled and uh, it's such we are uh, formulating now uh, a green financing working group. It will be a of, uh, of this work participated by their projects. Uh, have a chance to receive their projects, but because it's um, it's an ongoing process. It's not only one issuance and we will stop. No, we will seek to finance as much as we can uh, uh, in all uh, uh, fields of, uh, of Egypt's economy. So this uh, financing uh, working group will uh, be widened to uh, include other ministries. And the for of proceeds, uh, we are obliged to allocate 100% of the proceeds within 24 months from the date of issuance. This, of course, uh, includes the years of the uh, re-existing uh, projects. And the existing projects with its refinancing portion would be covered and by Two, 12, uh, 24 months after two years from uh, from now, we grant that 100% uh, of the proceeds will be allocated. And finally, the fourth pillar of the framework, and it's very important for investors to follow up on uh, on the targets and uh, on their investment uh, in this bond, the reporting. We will uh, uh, publish an annual report to provide the annual allocation of the proceeds and to provide also the impact reporting uh, on the projects. Uh, up till now, we have 17 projects uh, as a short list, which will receive uh, the, uh, the allocation of 750 uh, million in USD. And we will be obliged as well to submit an annual report uh, one year from now. And uh, number five was just referring to the external review. Uh, as I told you, that already we received a robust uh, opinion uh, from Visualis. And the international endorsement and support the World Bank has offered his technical assistant uh, to, to us, whereby the working group will benefit from uh, the huge experience that belongs to the World Bank sustainable team. They are leader uh, in this uh, green financing, and actually, uh, the World Bank was the first initiative. Uh, was the first initiative uh, uh, came from the World Bank. Uh, and we welcome their uh, these initiatives, and we already agreed with them. And uh, uh, expecting from uh, mid November, we will start the workshop to educate uh, other co colleagues from other ministries uh, how to prepare a good report in uh, uh, yani to be um, matching the best international practice. This slide shows examples of the projects that we are targeting for the green financing framework. We have Cairo Mineral, we have the Dabaa Desalination Planet, 
we have a solid waste management uh, investment policy. And finally, it's an example come from uh, renewable energy uh, category. And yeah, before concluding the presentation, we, we would like to share with you uh, the aspects of success and the issuance highlights we received on uh, on our uh, issuance done uh, in uh, uh, yeah, late uh, September. Uh, of course, is the first green bond uh, issued by a government in MENA region. Uh, we received a very high uh, uh, order book. Uh, and demand from investors. Uh, um, quality of order book was also impressive. We reached up to 3.7 uh, billion uh, in USD uh, orders uh, from investors. Uh, over subscription uh, was equal to five times from uh, the, the closed uh, amount. Uh, we, we, we decided to, uh, to, to appraise uh, to upsize the size we announced in the beginning of 500 million in USD to uh, uh, yani announce an acceptable amount of 750 million. Why we did that? Because uh, the massive demand we received, we wanted to uh, uh, gain new investor uh, and to allocate uh, uh, yani portions of this uh, size to them. And the number of investors reached around 220 account. So if we just close the size at 500, we wouldn't be able to satisfy all the investors. And one of uh, uh, the major success we consider it as because uh, we are here uh, at Minister of Finance, uh, very caution regarding the cost. We succeeded to uh, tighten the price uh, of uh, initial price suits by 50 basis point. And in addition to that, we succeeded to insi uh, price inside the curve by 12.5 basis point, which we considered as a negative new issue uh, concession. Uh, it, um, it's a coupon uh, uh, priced for this tra uh, tranche for five years uh, at 5.25% was the lowest coupon uh, for Egypt for this maturity uh, we ever achieved. And it was very important for us to, to see how many new investors especially from the AEG focused investors. We, ha we have received order and we are, uh, they have allocated uh, 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 a uh, portion of uh, uh, on the book from 30 AEG focused investors, uh, whereby uh, uh, 19 uh, new uh, investors uh, belong to pure green uh, category. We have done a lot of, oh, yani, a lot of investor calls uh, ahead of our uh, pricing. Uh, these calls, uh, uh, yani, were widely uh, uh, listened and uh, received contribution from investors. Hundred, almost hundred uh, investors from Asia, Europe, uh, and uh, North Africa, from uh, MENA region. Uh, participated in uh, in those uh, calls, and uh, yeah, you are available. If you have any questions, please, please uh, go ahead and let us know. And thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Iman and Mr. Hegazi, for a very rich presentation. Uh, actually, it shows that uh, the government is leading by example. It understood that green bonds will not be just limited to a governmental issuance, but it might extend to uh, private issuance, uh, maybe banks who could issue uh, these green bonds and enable financing for uh, private projects in addition to what the government has been issued for a public project. Uh, most importantly, what has been mentioned that already a legal framework has been established for the issuance of these bonds, which is very much important. Uh, also uh, uh, shown the effect of these green bonds on the economy. 
and uh, uh, the next plans of the government and the six steps which has been considered or uh, procedures which is usually through project identification, evaluation and selection, management, uh, procedures and reporting, external review and international endorsement which shows that uh, there is kind of uh, accreditation for this bond to be sure that this green bonds is being go going to be used really for a green project and not financing uh, maybe other project which is might not be green. Uh, I uh, believe uh, uh, this presentation stimulated already a lot of questions. I will postpone the question to the end of our three presentations, but for sure many questions uh, came out. Uh, I just would like to point that we are now joined by 78 uh, attendees, uh, which shows how much this uh, uh, webinar is uh, sounding uh, for our investors. Uh, now I will switch to our second presenter, uh, which is uh, Dr. Medhat Nafa. Uh, Dr. Medhat Nafa, he was a former uh, executive chairman of the Metallurgical Industries uh, Holding Company, which is the largest state-owned uh, holding company. He also was a chairman of the Benin Institute for Metallurgical Studies. Uh, and he is economic expert at the Egyptian Economic Court. Uh, he also was chief risk officer uh, and general manager NDC's department at the Egyptian Exchange uh, market, vice chairman of Sustainable World Group uh, and the World Federation of Exchange, uh, as well as many other positions in the exchange market, which shows how he has a very and long and deep experience in this market. Uh, Dr. Medhat Nafa is a PhD holder uh, in economics uh, from the Faculty of Economics and Political Science at Cairo University. Also, he has a master's degree in economics uh, from an institute for Arab research and studies. He also a writer of a book entitled <coughs> Risk Management, Theory and Application. Furthermore, he is co-author of uh, many other uh, papers and uh, books. Uh, Dr. Nafa, I appreciate if you uh, share with us your presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Salmawi. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Marion and uh, all the panelists and participants. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure actually to be part of this uh, important webinar. Um, and the participation also is very interesting. So I'm happy to, uh, to have all these uh, attendees. Uh, I remember a few years ago, uh, we were preparing for the COP22 conference and um, in the workshop, uh, people kept saying we are very pessimistic about the uh, lowering the footprint, the carbon footprint uh, uh, worldwide, uh, and we were not uh, uh, moving quite right. And also they kept saying we are unhappy with having 100 billion US dollars from the COP21 conference, having them ready to be dispatched into um, investments, into green investments. A long time ago, actually, we started having uh, uh, this um, um, uh, initiative working uh, through uh, EGX, um, through the SSE, the Sustainable Stock Exchanges Initiative by the UN, and through also the work group that I'm honored to be a vice, I was honored to be a vice chairman. Um, we started in Egypt since uh, 2010 uh, by launching uh, the uh, first ESG index uh, in the region, the second in the world after India. And this index uh, also has uh, the privilege of screening uh, uh, products, screening the equity, screening the shares of companies, of listed companies in uh, uh, listed on the uh, uh, stock exchange, the Egyptian stock market, screening them on different criteria to be eligible as uh, uh, green or green aligned or uh, um, environment friendly. And these all are terms that took place in the argument and the debate worldwide, but unfortunately not in Egypt. 
So this is why people were confused, a bit confused, and media were very confused about the first issuance of green bonds, sovereign green bonds in Egypt, uh, because this debate didn't take place properly in Egypt. We don't know the difference between labeled and labeled. We don't know the difference between uh, uh, long maturity and short maturity. What uh, uh, um, Copone rate is proper for uh, such uh, projects, uh, underlying projects. Uh, many, many uh, questions, but uh, I'm very happy with the presentation. Thanks for uh, the team um, from, um, uh, from the uh, Ministry of Finance. They started by abiding, abiding by the uh, uh, principle of uh, uh, bonds, the uh, principle of green bonds principle actually by uh, ICMA. And this is a first step. Um, um, of course, we, we were waiting for uh, some knowledge uh, sh uh, sharing uh, uh, um, platforms, but uh, the, the, fair, the very important issue is that uh, um, concerning the sovereign bonds in Egypt, this is the only bonds uh, cluster that are uh, having a proper yield curve. We don't have corporate uh, uh, bonds uh, um, yield curve in Egypt. So this is a very important story. So I'm going through my presentation. Um, I'll take you through um, a few topics, yeah, uh, through the global climate finance needs uh, with a specific uh, focus on the developing countries. Uh, some policy recommendations on promoting uh, uh, green finance, um, establishing harmonized mechanism at the national level, creating sustained supply of green finance, and the instruments and tools and mechanisms needed to support green finance some recent trends they are not recent anymore, by the way, but they are still uh, in the in the pipeline for in many countries like Egypt. So green bond principles, I will not uh, repeat it again because uh, um, uh, the team from uh, Minister of Finance did uh, a very good job. Global green uh, bond market, I will take you at a in a glance. Egypt Egyptian exchange actually as a leading model um, and kept uh, pushing in this. Uh, uh, um, new stream of uh, products uh, uh, since uh, a decade. Next, please. So we all know that sustainable development finance plays a key role in helping developing countries, of course, to tra for the transition to the low carbon and the climate resilient and environmentally sustainable pathways. Uh, uh, we have put in place uh, SDGs, uh, and we were participating uh, uh, firmly and uh, positively uh, in setting these goals. And on the national level, actually, uh, uh, the Minister of Planning uh, uh, did a good job in uh, uh, making it real in Egypt and putting in place uh, a lot of uh, uh, key uh, KPIs to, to monitor. In uh, 2015, governments adopted three major agreements that set out uh, their vision for coming decades. Uh, um, the set of 17 sustainable development uh, uh, goals, as you all know, and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and the financing uh, um, uh, for developing package. Next, please. So, overall, five to seven trillion US dollars a year are needed to implement SDGs uh, globally. Developing countries are estimated to have to face an annual gap. We have an annual gap of 2.5 trillion. This is an estimate in areas such as infrastructure, clean energy, water, which is we we call uh, the, the products of uh, clean water and simulation, the uh, the uh, the blue uh, bonds and the blue uh, instruments, uh, water and sanitation and agriculture. According to International Energy Agency, the world needs one trillion. US dollar a year up to uh, until we reach uh, 2050, uh, God willing. So what are the specific needs of developing countries? I don't want to be textbookish, uh, but we, we need to go through it in world direct investments. A key challenge is how to support long-term green finance effectively prior to establishing mature local bond market. It is very important uh, uh, to have the infrastructure ready in place uh, everyone can issue a bond, everyone can, uh, can uh, make a platform on the exchange uh, for a secondary market for uh, uh, different uh, classes of products, uh, uh, but it is important to have in place uh, um, um, sweeteners, 
to investors. We need to have in place uh, a good infrastructure, uh, not an IT, not uh, specifically IT and uh, um, the uh, technical platform only, but also legislative. Financial system development. We need to develop, the developing countries need to be able to contribute to international debate and the practice through the G20 and other relevant forums. Actually, our uh, presence in the SSE uh, uh, workshops and uh, um, conferences uh, was very weak. Our presence in the COP21, I rarely found an Egyptian with me. Our presence in uh, uh, different uh, um, gateways and different uh, um, um, uh, paths uh, were um, related to this issue, a very important issue, is very weak. International knowledge sharing, we have to enhance cooperation in, in uh, uh, sharing experience between countries, leverage, le leveraging, extending and connecting existing platform and initiatives because we can't work isolated, we can't work on isolated platforms. Policy recommendations on promoting green finance, we will take you through uh, each one of this. Establishing a harmonized mechanism at the national level, this is one thing that we will start. Create a sustained supply of green finance, role of stock exchanges in supporting green finance. This is a secondary market and the exit way. Other mechanism to support green finance. Next, please. <clears throat> so the first topic, how to build a green financial system in process that requires collaboration across public agencies, involving finance, environment, economic planning, and natural resource management. How to establish an institutional structure to support green finance? How to establish uh, and enforce increasingly ambitious environmental laws, regulations, and standards? How to establish the legal basis for investors to undertake their environmental responsibilities? Fiscal and tax policies can be enhanced to support green finance. Enhance the use of tax incentives by implementing additional preferential ta taxes uh, uh, policies for green financial policies. And we were talking about Dr. Salmawi. Uh, um, um, touched on uh, uh, some important uh, topics, all important topics actually he was touching on, but especially for the EVs, uh, because I was involved in it uh, wearing the hat of the metallurgical uh, industries uh, holding. Uh, um, one of uh, the subsidiaries was um, NASCO. So uh, we are able to introduce uh, the EV by uh, the last quarter 2021. Uh, this EV car needs infrastructure needs 3,000, at least 3,000 spots of uh, uh, chargers uh, uh, everywhere by the Ministry of Electricity. But um, the most important thing that it needs and requires is the support. We need to have the state support on this issue. Uh, the second uh, uh, point is to create a sustained supply of uh, green finance. How to bridge the gap between supply and demand? This is very important. By understanding the financing characteristics, risk profiles and business models of green projects in order to find the business opportunities in green transformation. We need to build the infrastructure for green financial development. Greening the financial system requires more than uh, uh, the regular uh, um, uh, platforms. It requires developing the tools, the services, the infrastructure to support financial institutions. Environmental risk assessment criteria and the procedures databases to support the green finance decision-making uh, the green rating system, labeling, how to label your product and investment networks, training and capacity building. This is a, a very important issue. You can't start without having in place people who understand this product properly. The role of stock change is essential. Stock market is uh, ready to digest uh, uh, new products, always uh, uh, have a, a, a step ahead, always uh, looking ahead, always have an advisory committee uh, that uh, um, around the globe uh, brings you everything new. We started thinking about the RGTS, for example, to uh, increase volumes in the secondary market of uh, the uh, um, uh, regular conventional uh, bonds, for example. So these conventional bonds uh, um, are not traded, although they have a good uh, yield curve, uh, uh, but they are not uh, well traded in the secondary market. Actually, we have only trading through what we call the primary dealers uh, system. This primary dealers is nothing but uh, um, um, routing <laughs> routing deals, pre-arranged deals between uh, uh, the uh, issuer, who is the Ministry of Finance, and the commercial banks. And um, this is uh, not healthy. 
So we wanted first to increase volumes and to make liquidity, to inject liquidity to this market. Um, instru instruments, tools, and the products such as establishing a green stock index. For example, we started with ESG index in Egypt to promote the creation and use of a stock, a, a green stock indices. Develop green uh, bonds like what we have done. It is recommended to um, issue guidelines for green bonds by the regulatory authorities abiding by the general rules to define and classify green bonds, to consider providing tax exemptions on green bonds coupons to support the development of green bonds with modest interest subs subsidies and credit enhancement policies to build an environmental performance tracking and evaluation system for green bonds. Next, please. We still with the role of stock exchanges in supporting green finance, the instruments, tools, and the products. Um, we need also to establish a green channel in the IPO, in IPO process. It is recommended to simplify the IPO, the initial public offering of uh, the new uh, uh, product to be in, uh, in place, not only debt products, also equity and derivatives in the future. Review or filing procedures for companies that meet the definition of green enterprise. Uh, it's not easy to be a green enterprise. Uh, it is not easy to say we are green because uh, green with the um, steel factory is not green with the coke factory is not green with the sugar factory all these classifications and all these uh, um, um, uh, uh, distinguishing uh, um, criteria should be in place establish a carbon trading system and promote carbon finance we need to create trading systems and platforms that can demonstrate how to reduce emissions at lowest costs to launch a national green development fund this is also one way to do it a national fund could provide valuable link in the financial system by providing equity that can be leveraged to enable access to other financing avenues, such as bank loans. Next, please. <clears throat> then we can have other mechanisms. We have a very active Triple P project uh, financing by Triple P, the public private partnerships uh, in Egypt. And we uh, have a full support from the, from the government in many projects working uh, under this system and under the different uh, uh, classifications of this system from BOT to BOT to BOO, it is recommended for the government to consider engaging in the operations of SPV companies through equity investment where financing uh, triple P's to establish, to establish and improve the structure of tax incentives policies. We are repeating this point because it is important. Green banking systems, it is recommended also to establish specialized green credit and banking functions within existing banks to increase the interest subsidy for green loans. Implement compulsory environmental liability uh, uh, insurance. Uh, uh, we need to develop the regulations for trial implementation at the local level to develop the list of entities subject to mandatory or mandatory environmental liability uh, insurance. The GPP, I will not uh, repeat it again, but I will, I, I, I must, uh, um, mentioned that historically the green bonds market was dominated by uh, 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 supernatural and quasi sovereigns. However, the emergence of more rigorous framework around the definition of green bonds, namely the establishment of uh, uh, green bond principles uh, uh, made it different. The green bond principles initiative is a voluntary process guidelines for issuing green bonds. Um, it is uh, based on uh, uh, four core components or pillars uh, the use of proceeds must be utilized <clears throat> uh, for uh, in investing in green projects, which should be appropriately described in the legal documentation for the security. Um, so when we are offering this issuance, uh, the offering papers and documentation must explicitly mention and explain how, how the proceeds are working for, uh, uh, for supporting and for investing in green projects. And how can we consider it green and why we consider it green? All designated green uh, projects categories should provide clear environmental benefits, which will be assessed and where feasible quantified by the issuer. Next. <clears throat> the process for project evaluation and selection. The issuer of green bonds should outline a process to determine how the projects fit within the eligible green pro projects categories, the related eligibility criteria the environmental sustainability objectives. Management of proceeds also is very important. 
the uh, um, green bond principles encourage a high level of transparency and recommend that an issuer's uh, management uh, of proceeds must be uh, in place. Reporting, as mentioned earlier uh, by uh, the Ministry of Finance, Issuers should make and keep readily available up-to-date information on the use of proceeds to be renewed annually until full allocation. Otherwise, your investors will flee. Next, please. <clears throat> so we need to have a, lot, a look on the global green bond market. We still a tiny share. We have a very small cut in the market. Uh, I'm, I'm saying we as a, as a green bond issuer. Uh, but uh, actually, the conventional bonds <clears throat> is measured in trillions. It exceeds 2.5 to 3 trillions US dollars outstanding. But as client, a climate aligned bonds outstanding in 2018, uh, we have fully aligned US municipal uh, issuers uh, with 250 billion US dollars. And by fully uh, aligned, and this is a very important thing because this is the, how we classify and how we define and how we uh, define the thin line between uh, uh, fully and semi uh, and strongly aligned. Uh, more than 95% uh, of the revenues from green business line. This is how we consider the issuer as fully aligned with uh, uh, green uh, or with climate uh, um, objectives. Um, we have fully aligned issuers uh, um, some sums up to 497 US dollars. Uh, we have labeled green bonds only uh, equals to 389 um, and strongly aligned issuers. And the definition of strongly aligned is having about 75% to 95% of the revenues from obtained from green business lines. So think about it as Sharia compliant. Uh, are you a Sharia compliant institution or not? We must have a board to tell you. And this board in Dubai is different from board in Malaysia. And this board in Egypt, if any, will be different from the board in case A. So think about this by having uh, rating agencies. Ha um, already rating agencies started to have uh, functions uh, within inside its uh, um, uh, institutions, uh, having uh, um, uh, an eye on or keeping an eye on uh, this climate aligned uh, ratings. Uh, but also uh, um, we have new uh, uh, key players on uh, this playground. Uh, key players working only on rating uh, and classifying issuers and the products as well. By products, we mean debt and equity and other products. Next, please. So since the launch of the first green bond in 2008, the climate aligned bond market grown to an estimated 1.4 trillion uh, uh, US dollar. And the annual issuance of labeled green bond exceeded only 167 billion. So the other are uh, unlabeled. In 2018, uh, um, it was only uh, um, 20 billion uh, uh, US dollars. So um, it's up uh, more than five times. Or seven, actually. The growth of the green corporate bonds market is impressive. More than three quarters of the market comes from US or Europe, with the later making up nearly 60% alone. China makes up just 5% currency wise. 95% uh, of these bonds are dominated, denominated in either US dollar or uh, Euro. At the sector level, utilities 39% and banking 33% dominant. However, China is booming. Um, when you look at China uh, or the Chinese record in uh, exporting, for example, uh, you will find very interesting thing. It, it jumped from uh, the 10th rank uh, up to the first rank or the second and being competed with the US uh, in the second, the last decade. Same thing you can say on uh, this uh, uh, product. They started to have a very, uh, um, lucrative and liquid uh, 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 market of uh, green bonds. Still uh, a closed market, but it's not small, uh, even if it is uh, uh, closed. Uh, sustainability instruments and tools and the products, um, EGX as a leading model. Um, from 2004, we started implementing new listing and listing rules. 
uh, and in these rules, we started to have um, governance in place. And this is one pillar of the ESG, one important pillar. In 2010, we launched the SMP GX index. In March 2010, the first stock market in the MENA region and second worldwide. 2011, we hosted the annual event in uh, um, uh, 2010 and 2011 to promote the top rated companies according to ESG index criteria. Uh, and we started to uh, do it on an annual basis since then, except in the uh, years of uh, revolution, of course. Uh, 2013 EGX uh, was working on raising the importance of uh, the awareness of the importance of the concept of corporate social responsibility, the CSR, in its strategy for 2013 till uh, 2017. Next, please. In 2015, it was the year of uh, sustainability. So we have many, uh, we had many uh, events. So we had the uh, launch of sustainability-related national dialogue. We established sustainability advisory committee. We formed a senior executive committee for EGX uh, that includes 50% uh, um, of uh, the female component. In EGX, celebra uh, EGX celebrated UN Women Bell Ringing event um, um, in 2015 and 2016 and every year since then. Promoting gender equality, of course. Next, please. The Egyptian exchange also um, uh, acknowledged, for being, was acknowledged for pioneering issuing of the communication to share to stakeholders as a model for the SSE, the Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative uh, um, related to the United Nations. Uh, EGX also was working on developing the EG, uh, ESG information reporting guidance, which was uh, finished in 2016 for listing companies to uh, promote. Uh, we were an active uh, uh, member of the United Nations uh, Sustainable Stock Change Initiative. We are active members in Sustainability Working Group, SWG, the first uh, Arab uh, uh, elected vice chairperson. Um, we ha have been assigned uh, for the Global Investor Statement on Climate Change in December 2015. The initiative came for uh, it's high awareness of the risks, climate of the cl uh, uh, risks of the climate changes presence to uh, investors. Next, please. I think we are done. Yes, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. I'm ready for any. I'm sorry for uh, for taking a long time, but ready for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mekhat, for this very informative presentation. Uh, actually, it's give a wider picture about. Uh, uh, green bonds and green instruments in general it's offer uh, a global climate finance needs and also it include policy recommendation on promoting green bonds which basically represent like a roadmap how we can move forward with our green bonds uh, specifically the point you mentioned about trading with the secondary market labeling of products uh, uh, and uh, rating of agencies. And uh, uh, you then offer us a background about what uh, take place uh, in the Egyptian exchange market uh, for uh, sustainability. Uh, I think a lot of very interesting questions are coming now. Uh, I will keep the question till uh, our uh, third speaker, um, which I promised you that you're going to enjoy a very interesting speech uh, by uh, uh, engineer Ahmad Hassan. Uh, engineer uh, Ahmad Hassan is a clean energy professional, 25 years of global experience in the energy efficiency and renewable energy field. He spent half of his energy career in US developing and implementing program to programs to support invest, investing in clean energy technologies. He then took his uh, successful U.S. experience to global dissemination, where he provided advisory and consulting services to, serve, uh, to various international development organizations, such as EBRD, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, to help increase uh, the reach of clean energy technologies. He managed several energy development projects around the world for USAID, GIZ, 
as a world bank and he is currently managing EBRD green economy financing facility in Asia. Uh, engineer Ramad, uh, please, uh, uh, the floor is yours. Sabah uh, al uh, I was just wondering why are we speaking in English when all of us are Egyptians and about 90% We have some international <laughs> participants, by the way. Okay, all right. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, I do appreciate the invitation, and uh, I, I want to extend my gratitude to the first speakers for, the, for enlightening us about green bonds, and I myself have a lot of questions, but I'll wait until we, uh, we reach that, uh, that part of the discussion. Uh, what I wanted to speak with you today is probably a little more on the ground uh, compared to uh, the big size projects that we heard about under the umbrella of the $750 million uh, um, green bonds and, and also all the, the regulatory and certification and verification approaches to make sure that we have a healthy uh, green bonds market uh, as we get into first grade of this business. Uh, I, I don't think anybody in Egypt can claim to be an expert in, in how green bonds worked in Egypt because they haven't been yet. But I think uh, we will see, uh, I, I'm very encouraged by, by the government stepping into that. I think it will open up a lot of doors and create good businesses. Uh, however, this business is for the big guys. Uh, this is not for the SMEs. I mean, SMEs have a totally different language to speak different uh, type of project that they're interested in, uh, different type of financing mechanisms. So here's where I come into this discussion here. So I'm going to bring to you uh, an experience that is about three years old. Uh, I joined it six months ago, which is this EBRD GEF project. GEF stands for Green Economy Financing Facility. Uh, so what I will do is, uh, try to structure my, my presentation to you as follows. I'll tell you what it is in case uh, people are not aware of it. And then secondly, I will tell you the experience and what we gained in the last uh, three years. And finally, I will close with uh, lessons learned from this short experience. Uh, GEF is really one successful uh, on lending financing model where I think uh, the EBRD and the European Union have a lot of things to be proud of, of bringing in uh, this multi-donor platform. Uh, why are we calling it multi-donor? Uh, what it is, is you bring some financial resources from IFIs, International Financing uh, Institution. Uh, for example, the EIB, the European Investment Bank, uh, the AFD, the uh, French, uh, French Development Agency, uh, Green Climate Fund, uh, all of these people have money to spend and the normal development partners or donors, as we call them, business model is to give them to the country to implement specific projects. And in this case, they're being given to the financing institutions, the banks. Some of them are local and some of them are uh, international, but operating locally. They get the funds, they lend them to businesses that have projects with green features. And then the EU came in and added an incentive component to this to encourage people to participate, financial incentives. EBRD uh, provided the overall orchestration of the framework. How do they bring the various technical assistance uh, elements, like what we're extending? Uh, how do you support the banks in sorting out what is green and what's not green? How can you develop certain uh, indicators to judge the success of these projects by? Other issues have to do with the verification. After the project is implemented, did it really meet all the requirements? So that's what EBRD does really in, in, a, in a macro perspective. Uh, that model has been tested in four or five different countries. And so far, the, the level of success, I would say is very much acceptable. There will always be uh, lessons learned. There will always be stumbling and, and bruised eyes and, and uh, uh, swallowing feet when you walk down these paths in the first time. But I would, I would argue that I came here six months ago and what I saw was probably the matured part of the project after going through the difficult uh, times. But right now we have uh, four banks in Egypt, namely uh, 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 QMB, 
Qatar uh, National Bank Al Ahli. We have Alex Bank, Alexandria Bank, Bank Skindaria. We have uh, AAIB, the Afri uh, Arab African International Bank, Bank Al Arab Africa. And then we had, uh, until not too long ago, uh, National Bank of Kuwait, MBK, but they sort of paid off that loan. These four banks took money from the international financing institutions I mentioned through EBRD, as well as money from EBRD. And they put that money uh, towards uh, financing projects to the end use businesses. So where are we now? This is really, in, in essence, what, what the facility is all about. It's just borrowing money for projects. It could be normal projects, and I will speak about that, but has some green features on them. And the bank learns how to sort out what this green is, quantify it, and then use whatever technical assistance or financial incentives to give to these borrowers. So far, the project I think started uh, the phase that I'm managing right now started in uh, November uh, 2017, if I'm not mistaken. It's about three years ago, maybe early 2017. But where we are right now is we have uh, about 76 projects already borrowed loans from these banks, developed projects. Some of them are done and over with, but the repayment of these to the banks are continuing. And these unlocked about $105 million of investment. So people invested $100 million or thereabout in green projects, uh, 76 projects, uh, borrowed about uh, 78 million, 80 million dollars in that range. So it's about 80% of the total investment, approximately. Uh, they generated a lot of good things. And let me tell you what these good things are. I mean, it's pretty much standard, you know, energy efficiency, renewable energy. You borrow money, you install it, and it saves money. You know how to calculate it against a baseline. I think 90% of the people on this uh, webinar know that. So, so there's no magic in it. What it, what it really uh, showed us is uh, the market starts uh, reacting to these things uh, uh, a little too late into the process. So what we saw is you have a typical factory that uh, maybe produces packaging or uh, cold products or ice creams or something. They are coming to the bank to update their equipment anyway. They have no relevance to energy or environment. They're just borrowing four or five million dollars to update their equipment. They calculate the savings or the productivity that they will achieve and they go ahead with it. They go to the bank and the bank explain to them that there is a product called GEF that offers XYZ, as I mentioned. So they start thinking, so what is it that I need to do? And then they ask, well, if you can prove that you saved X amount of energy against the what would have been the machine that you would buy, then believe it or not, you will get some free technical assistance and you get some money. What is that money? It's between 10 and 15%. So if you borrow a million dollars from the bank and you prove that you managed to really save things and that might engage buying a little bit more expensive machine. But now all of a sudden, both the bank and that borrower started to think down that path. And you will get $100,000 of that million dollars as a bonus if you want to label it that way. Well, what happens here is products that are available in the market starts to push themselves on to these borrowers. These borrowers started to be intelligent about what to buy instead of the cheapest and, and the quickest and the one that will have the lowest uh, custom duties. Banks started to understand how to sort out these projects. So this is really what, the, what this facility achieved. I'm sorry, uh, this, what this facility achieved is raise the capacity of the system to understand if you get these projects, what can you label as green? What are the indicators that will make a project green? So I think the outcome of this should really show a few things. One is, does everybody look at energy efficiency the same way? Are there certain sectors that are much more sensitive to it than others? Are there certain governor rates that, because they have an industrial base, that should really be approached differently than other locations? And by that, I might want to say, if you want to go and go after hotels or the hospitality industry, you're certainly not going to go in the middle of the Delta. 
but then you have to go and figure out what these people in that area and in their business sector, like the hospitality, what do they need? How much, is, how do they calculate their business? How can they repay the loan and so on and so forth? The majority of the projects of the 76 projects I mentioned, a very, very large dominating percentage was in the industrial sector. Um, so, so what we learned uh, gave us one intro on one very hot topic, which is the PV. Uh, a lot of projects started to hear about the, uh, not the feed-in tariff, but the uh, net metering. And they liked the idea. And all of a sudden, people that were borrowing from the bank were not only limited to businesses, but some of what some people refer to as ESCOs or system integrators or project development or developers. They come in and borrow from the bank borrow from the facility, and then they go and develop projects at customer facilities. So case in point, you have maybe Coca-Cola has four or five facilities in different areas, but one PV provider would go borrow from the bank and then install different projects. And that developer would pay back and take the risk. So it's just a risk allocation. Now, all of a sudden we saw a huge uh, uh, jump onto PV installation these projects started to make like 70 80 percent of the pipeline uh, which means the government policy succeeded in convincing the small people to be encouraged to look into pv as an alternative uh, energy supply but then you start getting market echo that there is some changes in the potential policy or the outlook of what we want from the sector and while these noises may be out of goodwill and made to support the overall government policy, the way they reach the market is not always as such. So the market here is when you say, I really would like to organize the PV market in a much more organized or a much more effective way, if people would hear it, oh, uh, they want to get out of the PV market. So, we have an issue of communication here that when we devise policy, I just want to throw this as lessons learned. When you devise policy, you need to be very uh, in touch with your constituencies, the people that you, you want to make the policy reach. You. you need to explain it to them in language that they're a little bit more in tune with. So that was one of the lessons learned. It's very quick, it's very hot by temperature to me because now all of a sudden we saw some kind of a chilling effect on the speed by which these banks were signing loans on PV. At one time, we were worried that all these projects are PV, we need to diversify, and then bam, uh, there's like some quietness in the PV industry. And we understand the reason for that. And like I said, it's just a communication issue, but it, it could have been really uh, done with these people, maybe with the financing industry involved, uh, rather, uh, um, uh, uh, in a simpler format that people can buy it and accept it and be part of the solution. So that's one of the, the, the basically lessons learned. Um, I tried to basically organize my thoughts, <clears throat> but uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more uh, at ease when I, when I speak without, uh, without a piece of paper or presentation. So uh, if, I, if I forget to, to say any particular uh, piece of what I'm covering, uh, we will uh, uh, take it in the in the Q&A. Uh, the other issue is business models. Is that the PPA, the Power Purchase Agreement, believe it or not, some of us techies are very familiar with that term for 30 years. But now all of a sudden, customers started to understand what that means. Bankers started to deal with uh, providers of PV systems and want to learn how that PPA uh, bring risk to the bank uh, or lack thereof. So we, as technical assistants, we offer this type of support. We work with the business development uh, agency or uh, the service provider, ESCO or, or system integrator, and the bank. And we spend enough time to explain to them in lay language what this means and what could have been. And we change the articles and we come up with something both sides uh, will subscribe to. So um, having, having said that, I think one of the lessons learned is there are different business models to different sectors and different technologies uh, in the world of finance that ought to take their opportunity and be customized. Uh, it's just not a loan for five years at 5%. Let's find out what the central bank is, is giving 5% or 8%. I think it goes beyond that. 
And this is what I think is, is one of the successful elements of a lending platform like, uh, like the GET. Uh, added value for energy efficiency and renewable energy it has always been how much you save, but now people are talking about productivity, uh, about exporting business to the European Union. And now all of a sudden I have ways to show that I am more of a, a green player. Uh, what else is there? Uh, banks, I think I can claim that our uh, partner banks have gained a lot of experience in sorting out projects. Overall, I found this experience from my perspective was only six months since April 1. Uh, somebody got me into this on April 1st, so I thought it was April Fool's Day, but it turned out to be a real job. Um, one last thing I want to say, uh, I, did, I intentionally did not include it in my bio. I, I worked in the Egypt, Egyptian government for quite some time. I worked in the, uh, as, a, as, a, as a consultant to the Supreme Energy Council, Maglis al al for three years at uh, Firyas al Wazar at the cabinet. And I worked for five years as a green advisor to the Minister of Tourism, uh, advising on how to make the green transformation into the hospitality industry. But that experience in itself, is, I'm, I'm not really touting my, uh, my resume. I'm just basically saying that experience explained to me uh, how the government works. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but, but there, is, there are two different languages between the private sector and the government. And, and, and the jobs of people like myself and Dr. Hafiz and others is to step in and to try to match make, to make sure that these two languages can find something somewhere in between where they can talk to one another. I, I heard the presentation from the, the wonderful people from the Ministry of Finance. I, I understood it wholeheartedly. And I understand that the, behind this small number of slides, several years of work on that, Private sector doesn't see that. Private sector needs communication. And I, I really, really appreciate that. I appreciate the second the speaker, Dr. Nefa, also for explaining how the whole world look at things and we should not just be happy calling something green bonds. But there's, there needs to be a lot of certification to words that we use. There needs to be a lot of work on the ground that the private sector also need to understand what it means. I'll, I'll stop here. I spoke too much, and uh, I, I'm sorry that I did not meet the expectation of Dr. Hafiz of being uh, an interesting presentation. No, thank you, Ahmed. It's a very interesting. Actually, you are tweeting like the photo behind you for Omo Kalsum. It's a basically, I heard the Yani very nice uh, uh, singing and tweeting, yeah, really. Yani, I just I wanted, I wanted to expected. remember. I wanted to remember everybody were in Egypt and the official language is Arabic. That's why I have very a good. <laughs> very good. And also for sure, Yanni, uh, I think we know each other since 1996 when you uh, start work uh, back in Egypt. So you have a very long experience for sure in the Egyptian market. Uh, uh, we received a lot of uh, very interesting questions, but really first I would like just to emphasize what uh, 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 Engineer Ahmed mentioned about the role of this fund for small and medium sized enterprises because we have a lot of questions here about how this could benefit this medium and small enterprises from uh, this kind of green bonds challenges, which is very much important, lesson learned, and he focused very much on communication, which I believe it's one of the very important points which is need to be established and development of business model, how the market react really for this initiative and develop its own business model, which supports the business. Uh, uh, if you allow me, uh, I would like, if you allow me just to extend uh, the meeting for 15 minutes to allow uh, some of very interesting questions we receive uh, from uh, our participants. Uh, the first question basically, uh, or group of questions, I try to summarize and combine all this question to Minister of Finance. Basically, the main question was, is this green bonds is just focusing on a public project? Did the private sector could benefit from this uh, or how the private or is there is a plan that the private sector could benefit from these green bonds? And also uh, a question about uh, 
uh, the uh, tenor of these green bonds. Most of the projects which has been presented, it's a uh, public project with a long term, uh, while we understood that the tenor of these green bonds is just five years. So it's a medium to short uh, kind of finance. How this will fit with this project? Uh, so uh, both Mrs. Iman and uh, uh, Mr. Hegazi, uh, Yani, please, uh, what's your feedback about this uh, question? Yeah. Our, uh, 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 yes. Ah, yes. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Iman, please. Yes. Uh, sorry, Dr. Nofel, uh, could you just repeat quickly your question? Ah, yes. uh, the question was, is uh, 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 most of the funds of these green bonds or finance uh, uh, will be directed to public project? Is the private sector uh, is there is a plan to uh, 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 enable part of this to the private sector, either through public-private partnership projects or uh, creating funds uh, to support private sector? This is question number one. And question number two is that most of the project which has been presented, like monorail, like wind plants, like uh, 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 wastewater treatment, are a little bit a long-term needs, long-term financing, while uh, the bonds, as we understood, is just five years tenor. So uh, is that fit with this kind of project? So for, uh, for question number one, uh, I would like to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, make uh, sure that because it's a government issuance, uh, the net proceeds will be allocated to government projects. Uh, it's not authorized for the government to finance private projects, but uh, uh, it's not a full stop. Of course, uh, we can uh, we can uh, in future uh, direct some uh, transactions uh, coming uh, afterward to uh, the triple P projects. Uh, the first issuance uh, we did uh, last month, uh, it was the first time we uh, uh, explore uh, this field, first time to learn uh, uh, about this market. So we started uh, in a format of, uh, let's say it as a plain uh, vanilla uh, format for us, to make it easy for um, the government uh, uh, itself uh, because we have an interministerial committee from different ministries. Mm -hmm. We want things to go uh, smooth in the beginning. I'm sure uh, in the future we can upgrade uh, the stages of, uh, of our process. We can uh, widen the umbrella for, uh, for the issuances to cover uh, other sectors. Uh, as you said, the triple B project, for example, through the government uh, channels. Uh, and the, uh, for the question number two, regarding the long-term finance uh, 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 directed to projects uh, with this nature, uh, the monorail project uh, that you mentioned uh, will be executed over uh, several stages. Uh, we uh, contribute to finance uh, part of its first stage, and I'm sure in the coming stages, we will be ready to issue uh, further uh, uh, bonds, whereby we will uh, have uh, also uh, financing long-term projects. It's not only uh, 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 this transaction, as we uh, uh, mentioned, and we are making the confirmation on that, uh, expecting after the first year of uh, submitting the annual uh, report that we will be uh, ready for uh, further transactions. Um, where by then we will have, uh, yeah, you will have the good awareness in all uh, sectors, on all government sectors. Uh, they will have uh, a good knowledge, and the process will go more easily because we. We consumed around nine months to uh, to issue the first bond and drafting the framework. Uh, 
I'm sure the process afterward will be much easier. And we can even have uh, twice uh, in a year. It seems... Yes. It's okay now? Yes, we have... Yes, please. Sure. And I, I want to add something besides uh, my colleague uh, said. Um, although we, 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 we not cover the, the private sector projects, but at least we, we put the first benchmark for any issue to, to, to ongoing process to, to have a, the, the benchmark to, uh, to be the indicate for any uh, new issues. Uh, this number one for the uh, the uh, the period that we covered in our first uh, issuance, which is uh, five years only. As as we start, it's it's like a medium term uh, maturity, uh, and we prefer to start with this medium term and not to go for the long one because it's the first experience for us. But we have to test it. We have to examine it before to go for uh, any other longer uh, maturities. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's exactly, Annie, you uh, mentioned that uh, the government is leading by example. Uh, but for sure, we hope in the next issuance, uh, at least PPP project could be considered uh, as a part of the uh, portfolio. Uh, a second question forward to Dr. Methat, uh, which is about uh, metallurgical industry as an, uh, his experience with, uh, as a chairman of uh, uh, the holding company, uh, used currently renewable in Egypt. Is that can help in experts, uh, which you might tackle the point you raised about labeling production. So we could, uh, offer a label like a cleaner production, which could give an edge for export. And I might add from my side about uh, what the challenges you have, because we heard that you will have a solar plant for Naga Hamadi uh, 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 aluminum complex. And then the project uh, hasn't proceeded. What was the challenges really faces this um, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Salmawi. Actually, um, uh, Naga Hamadi Egypt Aluminum uh, is the largest consumer, industrial consumer of electricity in Egypt. Uh, it consumes almost one third uh, what uh, the high dam is uh, producing, uh, as you kindly know. Um, so we started negotiations with the um, EIB, actually, for financing this uh, solar plant, which will uh, barely cover 15% uh, of the consumption of electricity uh, of annual uh, of annual consumption of electricity for uh, uh, the cells in Naga Hamad. Uh, among other alternatives, uh, of course, because you can't uh, uh, finance uh, all transfers uh, with the same uh, instrument. But actually, uh, the project was uh, moving uh, forward uh, in a very fast pace. Uh, however, one increase, one uh, uh, penny one penny increase in the uh, price of uh, the kilowatt per hour uh, cost us in uh, Egypt aluminum uh, around 50 million uh, Egyptian pound a year. So uh, the project was planned uh, under uh, certain assumptions and the assumptions were uh, governmentally uh, um, cleared and announced that electric electricity by 2019 at least uh, will keep uh, uh, moving around um, 47.5 uh, 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 piastres per kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour. Uh, now it reached almost 111, and you can make the math. <laughs> so uh, this uh, 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 sabotaged the uh, feasibility study for the project, uh, and uh, we switched uh, the um, um, you know the um, the scope of the project to be. Uh, Sorry, uh, just to, yeah. So, can you can you hear me? 
I can hear you, but I couldn't see you. So please uh, switch <laughs> on trying, your camera. I'm, yes, yes, I'm trying, but it, it tells me that you cannot start video because the host has disabled it. I'm, I'm not right, sure why. So it's our mistake. <laughs> uh, please, sorry for interruption. Please proceed. No, no, well, we could uh, sorry, correct sorry. our mistake. Yes. So I was. I was. Now you, can, you make... can now join. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'll try. Uh, can you see me now? Not yet. Uh, ah, please proceed so, uh, okay. and we try to resolve this. So you, 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 you can him. make. Ah, yes, yeah. yes, already. <laughs> yes, we can see you. You, you can. Thank computer. you. You see? Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry for interruption. Yes. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. So you can make uh, uh, the math to uh, um, to see how um, uh, very expensive it became uh, this project uh, mm -hmm. and very uh, uh, unfeasible uh, uh, for the time being. So uh, we, we switched the plan uh, with the minister uh, to have uh, an alternative project, uh, and uh, this project was uh, subject to uh, final say from uh, the Ministry of Electricity about how we calculate the wheeling charges, how we consider the PPA, and things like that, that uh, the investors and investment banks uh, and in, uh, international institutions were keen to know, and yet uh, we didn't give them a, a, a short answer. That's why we also try to purchase uh, clean uh, uh, energy, to purchase electricity from Dr. Khayat, and he was okay with that, and Dr. Sopki knows quite well, and some complications happened uh, out of our hands. That's why uh, uh, things are still um, in the hands of uh, Dr. Shaker, and I believe he is considering uh, uh, doing uh, taking the right uh, uh, choice. And we succeeded actually to have this uh, 10 piastres um, equals to 500 million Egyptian pounds a year uh, for Egypt alone. We, we succeeded to, to take uh, this advantage from uh, the uh, cabinet, from uh, Dr. Mabouli and Dr. Shaker, uh, um, uh, under the circumstances of the COVID-19, of course, but it was negotiated uh, even uh, two months earlier. So um, uh, that's why, but uh, the, the product uh, is uh, uh, very uh, liquid and can be produced in a very successful way. Uh, uh, but as, you, as we said before, you must pave the way, you must have the awareness, you must have the, pro uh, the uh, underlying project well-defined uh, and the feasibility study also uh, uh, must succeed. Uh, the second part of the question, which was forward about labeling products uh, as a green products, for example, could help in exporting. This is another maybe alternative instruments, as you mentioned in your presentation, which is might be post-investment. Yani pre-investment, uh, maybe loans uh, or bonds offer finance, but post, if I label my product as a green project, uh, product, it might help and give me an edge in exports. Is that, could uh, be an approach also? Of course, yeah. and, um, by mentioning Naga Hamadi, for example, it was labeled even before uh, the uh, invention of green bonds, it was la uh, labeled as a green projects because it depends on uh, the high dam, as you know, and the electricity is produced uh, in a very clean way. Uh, and, and this is, was the, the main success factor uh, for the project because it's a cheap uh, source of electricity uh, production. So um, yes, it is important to be labeled as such. Uh, and because of this, uh, Naga Hamadi was uh, labeled as uh, uh, one of the uh, climate aligned uh, um, uh, factories uh, around the globe and was eligible to be in good communication with international uh, uh, banks and international institutions in order to support a cheaper, uh, with lower interest rate, of course, cheaper uh, loans and other uh, means of uh, finance. Thank you. Uh, Engineer Ahmed, we have two questions to you. One come from an international participant, by the way, uh, which uh, he mentioned, why did Jeff go for non-sovereign loan? Where the Egyptian government, why the Egyptian government is not in uh, the fund flow? So this is uh, a question, it's a, my, my, uh, is the government could contribute more funds to the GAF and use it 
as a, a, a vehicle for offering finance? Is that allowed or it's closed fund just for EBRD funding? Uh, please uh, unmute your microphone. We cannot hear you. Sorry. Uh, yes. There is a delay in uh, the, uh, 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 yes. I cannot hear. Yes. We, we, we cannot hear. Try to uh, mute and unmute again. Maybe it works, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can hear, but it's a very low voice, uh, Yanni. Oh, uh, I don't know how to fix that, to be honest with you, but uh, how about now? Is that any better? Uh, yes, much better, yes. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't understand the question, but, but based on what you said, I think the question you were asking, would the government be able to contribute? Yes. To, uh, no, because this is made for the private sector, for one, and the government has other vehicles, like uh, the initiative that they have with the uh, CBE, with the Central Bank of Egypt of five and 8%. So there's another vehicle for the government to get in, but this is mainly for the development partners. The money is coming from EBRD, Green Climate Fund, AFD, uh, EIB, um, and I'm, maybe I'm forgetting one, but the bottom line of it is no, and and I don't know how that will um, will change the issue. And the issue is you have a platform that offers money in a in a group way in, in getting more than one donor engaged from different angles to to offer something that can be replicated. If the mm -hmm. government feels that they want to do one similar approach and create one central uh, uh, fund mechanism where all the donors' money can come into it and follow that, uh, perhaps that might be the, the future generation of this type of concept. Okay. Uh, I think we have also another question uh, to you about, uh, is it possible for the beneficiaries of GAF to get an access to export funds offered by the government, I mean, could uh, a beneficiary benefit from more than one financial vehicles, uh, one offered by uh, GAF and other offered by the government, or uh, if they got one benefit, they couldn't have an access to other? Well, uh, the case in point is uh, the one with the CBE, which offers either five or 8% to SMEs. So they can get the 8% and they can get the financial incentives from us. So you can mix and match as long as the agreement of whatever uh, option that's offered there allows for that. It, it is not something that GEF will determine whether you can mix and match with government. So uh, I'm not so sure why we keep bringing the government in. This is a private sector to private sector field, uh, but it plays to the best interest of government. So, um, but anyway, I hope I answered the question. I, I'll, I'll ask Omu to, to answer question. the question. <laughs> uh, 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 we have also another question uh, to the Minister of Finance. One of them is uh, 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 looking to the portfolio of the finance projects. We couldn't find a project for energy, energy efficiency. Uh, so is that uh, uh, in a plan to, in future, to uh, include it within the portfolio energy efficiency uh, projects? Also, we have... Uh, another question regarding how can green bonds support energy transition, including, for example, uh, new projects like hydrogen production uh, and consumption, bioenergy, 
Uh, renewable energy, it's understood that the government is already financing renewable some wind plants already. Uh, so uh, the question is basically, why energy efficiency is not included in the portfolio and is there is a plan in future or it's based on the feedback come from different ministries to Ministry of Finance and how it's being ranked. Uh, a secondary, uh, new or uh, innovative technologies, is that will also be included? Minister of Finance. Uh, yes, Dr. Hafiz, for uh, the uh, first please, question. Uh, if you uh, uh, open the camera, please. Uh, it's okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Uh, so, uh, it's not working, for... please proceed, yeah. Please proceed. We hear you. Okay. So for the, for the first question, why we uh, don't see uh, why investors or, or the participants who ask it uh, that uh, they can see the projects related to energy efficiency uh, uh, in the current portfolio because uh, yani, the cooperation we had with uh, uh, yani, different ministries we were uh, very keen to uh, build a very uh, good and broad framework that will help us in uh, uh, in the coming uh, steps and coming stages to uh, issue transactions referred to uh, or referenced to uh, this framework so we included as much as we we know uh, uh, the government uh, is having of these categories in the framework despite we don't have an exact examples for such uh, categories uh, to be included in the first uh, portfolio but for sure we have plans to uh, modify and uh, 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 yeah, update the portfolio the current portfolio uh, as uh, as i have said uh, in in our presentation that also we have we will have uh, uh, yeah, for the working group, we are aiming to include more ministries to provide us with more uh, projects that will be added to the current portfolio. Uh, the, current, uh, the current portfolio uh, focused more on renewable uh, uh, projects, sustainable uh, uh, water management projects, clean transportation uh, projects, and waste management projects. But for sure, because we also have another category uh, related to uh, climate adaptation projects, this is what we will uh, consider as uh, our homework for the coming stage, uh, to, to include projects related to uh, those uh, categories, uh, energy efficiency and climate adaptation projects. Uh this is fine with uh, another question about the criteria to select the project. Is this criteria based on the government plan because in a government plan might be a kind of a mix of criteria between public services as well as green projects or it's a purely green target so you could differentiate between two projects based on their impact as a green project. What's the criteria is being considered in selecting projects? Yes, we are, we are agreeing with you that the criteria was based on selecting projects which is class, classified as pure green projects. In addition to that, because it is the first transaction uh, named by the government, we focused on the projects that totally financed by the budget. So in the pipeline of our portfolio, we have projects come from uh, uh, some authorities. It's not uh, directly financed by the, uh, by the budget, but we keep uh, we kept their projects uh, in the portfolio as a pipeline for second and third and coming issuances. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, uh, we have questions to, uh, to Dr. Methat. Uh, basically, Yani, most question to Dr. Mahmoud goes beyond the green uh, bonds. It goes for other alternative or other complementary mechanisms. So a question about uh, carbon pricing or 
uh, emission trading system within Egypt uh, uh, could also enable finance, maybe also guarantee of origin certificates or green certificates. And is the exchange market uh, is thinking about a kind of a secondary market for trading such kind of uh, products or it's not yet it's a little bit far to go for this? No, actually, that was a plan. And when we were uh, um, trying to introduce um, uh, these uh, products uh, to the market um, uh, in the discussion with, the, uh, uh, for example, the World Bank, uh, they were saying, they kept saying, why are you interested? You are in the stock market and uh, your role is a bit, uh, um, much be, uh, a, bit, a bit, not now at least, yeah. you, you must wait um, a little bit until the uh, offering, uh, the primary market works, the investment banks get uh, warming up, the government uh, uh, brings to the market uh, their sovereign products uh, in a green uh, labeled uh, uh, fashion. Uh, so they kept saying that, but unfortunately we, we didn't have a sponsor in place. So this project or this stream uh, of projects, uh, um, wide uh, um, 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 spectrum of projects uh, of products must be sponsored by a certain sponsor. Uh, um, actually, we were in uh, communication with uh, the CBE, the Central Bank of Egypt, and other investment banks, the large ones. Uh, um, they need to have um, sweetener. They need to be uh, um, uh, to, to have incentives to get uh, into these issuances in place. So um, that's why we were took by surprise uh, when the green bond uh, finally uh, issued uh, uh, without what we uh, expected to, to have um, in, uh, as workshops and discussions and knocking doors and missions. Uh, uh, and uh, also within the pandemic uh, uh, chaos, so uh, that was a very uh, um, um, important move. Uh, it, it's better to come, uh, uh, it's, it's good to come, even if you come uh, uh, late. Uh, uh, but we keep asking, who is a sponsor? Who will be the sponsor of such uh, uh, product? Uh, it can't be the Ministry of Finance. With all due respect to Ministry of Finance, it can't be the government itself. Uh, we must think about uh, the FRA, the EFSA. We must think about uh, um, uh, some FRA other please? NGOs, the uh, the uh, regulatory authority, the financial ah, regulatory financial authority. Financial regulatory authority, yes. Uh -huh. It used to be EFSA, Egyptian Financial uh, uh -huh. Supervisory Authority, and now uh -huh. it's the FRA. Uh -huh. So um, uh, it's more like uh, more similar to the SEC in the United States, supposedly. Right. Um, uh, European and American uh, participants. So this uh, authority uh, can put in place because the development is also one of its main uh, mandates, not only uh, setting rules and regulations and being a regulator. Um, so um, I think that, uh, I believe, not, not just think that uh, the authority started to make uh, uh, things mo uh, move uh, along, uh, but still, we don't have a liquid bond market, conventional bond market. Conventional market must be liquid first before we introduce uh, a liquid uh, secondary market in a green uh, um, hat. It, we must have the, the market in place. Uh, secondary market for bonds is lousy. It is not working, we, to, to, be, to be frank. It is only a primary market. It's just a prearranged deals, not a, a, a liquid uh, market. So this is to answer it in a... Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I have a question to Engineer Ahmed, uh, which uh, you, the point you raise about communication between the government entities and the private sector, and how uh, this, if there is communication is not going uh, fluently, it might have an impact as a point you raised about uh, the drop in number of projects which has happened uh, 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 what's your recommendation regarding establishing kind of constructive uh, communication scheme between uh, the government uh, entities and the uh, 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 developer? And what could be a role of a fund like yours uh, 
uh, in facilitating such kind of uh, communication. Uh, you hear me okay now? Yes, very well. I'm not so sure I can an answer that, Dr. Hafiz, because if there was a very simple answer I can give in a few seconds, the, the issue would have been resolved long, long before I even showed up. I, I think we have a, a, uh, a business cultural difference and for, for good reason. I mean, the government has a mandate to offer things in a certain way and they are challenged by available resources, uh, foreign debts, local debts. I mean, all of these things, the private sector couldn't care less about it, but the private sector is also driven by profit and time and, and quickness and decision-making. So these two sometimes come in conflict. How do we go about making this thing uh, a little more um, smooth between the two? Uh, I don't know, but maybe a project like your good self can probably, uh, you, you have a communication component, I think, in, in your project. Maybe you can uh, do a little bit more of these webinars focused on the mutual interests of the two sides on one topic, like green bonds. How do, I mean, uh, Dr. Renafa said that the secondary market for bonds is, is useless. You know, well, as a private sector, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's something, this is like a loan, it's not a bond. I mean, if it doesn't have a future uh, fluctuating value or price, why should I even buy it, even as an investor, as an individual investor? Why should I buy it in the international market? Uh, I'll go buy a, a, a Google's bond or something. But So things like that. I mean, you need to create the dialogue of how do people look at it the same way. It's not always the national interest and national interest alone. I mean, the PV is a perfect example. Look how many times have we spoken about the future targets? 42%, uh, per, no, 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 50%. I recently heard 60%. So I'm offering 75, you know? <laughs> it, is, uh, it is something that really needs to be communicated properly. Why these numbers and where do they come from and decision-making and altering the path, how do they happen? before I make a ruling of, I decided to stop this or I decided to move that or double that, I need to make sure, how is it gonna impact everybody else, especially in the SME business, especially on those. You know, People don't have hundreds of millions to spare and wait for six months to, to make up for losses. These are people that borrow two million pounds, five million pounds, 12 million pounds. They need quick decisions, they don't need chops. So how to do it? Communication. Communication is an art. It's not a session. It's not a webinar. Communication is a style of communicating between people. In, in our team, in our team that has 10 people, uh, when I find communication drop, I fix the communication. I don't deal with the issue. I don't deal with the project. I, I deal with the communication problem. Because if, if two entities cannot really speak the same language, uh, how do you think things will work? So. I, I would pass it back to you and say, would it be a recommendation for your good self to lead a communication uh, platform on one specific target and make a series of those and, and become a good messenger to, to help out in, in this uh, cultural translation? I tell you, I worked in the government. I worked in the government and, and people accused me the next day of, oh, you became part of the government, so you're defending the government. No, I just became more sensitive and, and sympathizing with how the government makes decisions. It's not easy to work for government. There's a lot of challenges. Private sector couldn't care less about. So both sides have reasons to be not comfortable and the likes of myself and you and everybody else have a role to play. Now I don't hear you. Uh, what you refer to the project is exactly what has been planned for component D of the project, which is establishing Cairo Energy Sustainable Information Center, which is way for communication, information, and awareness uh, regarding this and try, try to be like a forum. A final question to you, uh, Ahmed. Uh, is a borrowing credit was a challenge for some of your customers or this wasn't the challenge because sometimes maybe loans available at uh, favorable, favorable conditions, but 
consumers or borrowers or developer has a credit problem. Is that was a problem? Uh, this is a, a very, very, very sensitive nerve that you touch. And this is not for our project. This is for the general lending business in Egypt. I mean, in Egypt, we are, and maybe I'm speaking out of ignorance, but we don't have a very robust project finance. We have, we have, we, we, the banks fund money to those who know can pay it back. Okay, it's not, it's not the credit worthiness of the project itself and the cash flow. Yes, yes, they look at it. But in the final analysis, the bank will issue a ruling whether or not to give money to X client because they know that X client, no matter what happens, they're going to pay it. So regardless of whether or not what we do uh, gets traction or not, it's the bank's culture that really decides that. So. So my, my answer to you is the type of our service that we offer to the bank relaxes this a little bit and, and make the bank start looking at cash flow. And case in point, the, the PPA. When they start saying, the banks will come back to us and call our experts and say, oh, I just heard that there will be a no cost increase for electricity. And as a matter of fact, industrials are gonna get 10 piastres off their per kilowatt hour cost. How is that going to affect the, P the cash flow for a, for a PPA for your ESCO that was depending on a certain cash flow based on, you know, $1.25 a kilowatt or a pound 25, and now that's going to be uh, flat for five years. So there is no inflation in the cost. How is that going to affect? So you start in explaining to them that this might really have or not have an effect. Uh, so I, I don't think there is, I think it, it all boils down to answer your question to the, to the culture of the financing institution, whether or not you really want to get into that. We're seeing some of our banks are running at the speed of light and others are still trying to do their work on their own time. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I ought to stop at this point, although it's very interesting. Thank you very much for our distinguished panelists for their contributions, so I think we all of us have been learning a lot of them. And uh, I think this is just to trigger uh, how important to have uh, such kind of new financial instruments. Uh, green bonds, it's one of the financial instruments, yet there is others, as we have seen, uh, that it could be also, we have a roadmap that green bond, what's happened is just a start and we expect that there, that things will be evolved uh, in future. Uh, the government already led by example, uh, and we hope that private sector also will follow and large financial institutions in the country, uh, issue their own bonds and create funds uh, specifically for the private sector to enable finance. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your contribution. Thank you for our participants for very interesting questions. We are sorry if we haven't answered some of the questions. We try as much as possible to fit within the allowable time, but we will keep uh, 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 following some of the questions with our uh, panelists and come back to you. Uh, also, the uh, YouTube uh, recording for this webinar will be enabled. Uh, so. Uh, to follow up later. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to see you in our next topic. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.